Don't fight with contractors. It's a waste of time. And like you said, keep your mouth shut because the overt thing with the PA and the camera crew and the guy with the, you know, the headphones on and the boom mic and everything trying to do like a reality show. That's the overt version of them trying to get play gotcha, right? You don't want to end up on YouTube, even if it's like the guy's buddy is standing a few feet back with his phone up recording you. Don't let people record you. If they, if they insist, I'm ending, the, I'm ending the inspection. I'm not letting anybody record me, number one. Number two, don't. I had this happen, and I didn't fall for it. A uh, habit with myself of just keeping my mouth shut, right? If I'm denying this roof, I'm not going to be like, well, I mean, I guess you can sort of be right. Never saying that. If I'm saying no, I'm saying no. Because I had a guy, there's a couple of guys from this little, they were, I mean, crooks saying it. I said it out loud in public on YouTube. These dudes were straight up crooks. They had recorders or something in their pockets and they would, they, you'd walk around these houses and they had nothing. I mean, you could look at the Southwest facing fascia and it was 10 inch fascia, smooth, not, not even as so much as like, it didn't even have bird poop on it, let alone like a spatter or dents or anything. And I'm looking at all this stuff. I know which direction the storm came from, but no sides had damage, nothing on the roof or anything. And I'm denying it, denying it, denying it. And the guy's like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Nope, 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 nope. Right. And then F equals zero, back B equals zero. Right. And I'm climbing down off the roof. And like the guy's, he kind of comes over, stands close to me. He's like, well, I mean, you know, just between you and me. And he do, does this number. Right. And you kind of have to admit that that, that is hell. It actually is hell damage. You have to, you have to, you, you, you know, you're denying it, but you have to admit that it is. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, I'm not admitting any such thing because it simply isn't. Right. Couple of meetings with those dudes, and then I get a call from the carrier manager who I was dealing directly with on this event because they just I was the only guy. And she said, Hey, listen, if you ever run into these dudes from this company, just be aware they're recording conversations and playing gotcha with the adjusters. They'll say the adjusters will say no, and then they'll record them saying, Well, I kind of think it could be, right? And then they go when the adjuster leaves, they play it back to the insured. We've had insureds calling steaming mad. And I was like, well, I met with those guys and I, I, I usually just keep my mouth shut. So I, they're not going to catch me in that. Don't say anything. I mean, I, well, I couldn't believe don't it. Don't say a word. Don't, don't say a word. Don't try don't to, to. You don't have to say a single thing at all. You don't have to engage them at all. I do as a matter of like friendliness, right? I, I don't want to be like, have it be totally adversarial and confrontational because if they start asking questions or whatever and you just ignore them, then it's going to be weird. Um, and I find that I catch more bees with honey than with vinegar, right? Um, but there's there's some there's some fly by nighters and some shady dudes out there that will do whatever they can to put a wedge between you, the carrier, and the customer. And your job isn't to be part of that wedge to where they're introducing doubt into the situation where it's like, oh, the, maybe the insurance company really is cheating me, right? If you're part of that, then you're part of the problem. Do it right. If if there's damage there, you pay for it one hundred percent, right? If it's there, if right. you're like even if it's like gray area, you've got some collateral and you're like, look at these shingles, they're like, Yeah, I don't know. You know, that I think that could be one. Circle that if you can get eight of them on on that slope, circle those suckers and yeah. buy them. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or ten dollars per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your e &O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net 
slash Adjust Your TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjust Your TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.